Delicious Science. Today, we're diving into the amazing process of skin wounds regenerating using pig skin. First off, let's observe pig skin. Ta-da! This is pig skin. You might think that pig skin has a different structure from human skin, but in fact, it is exactly the same as our skin. The outermost layers of the human body are the epidermis and dermis, beneath which lie subcutaneous fat and muscle. The area under the dermis contacts the subcutaneous fat, which is why there's so much fatty tissue remaining. Interesting, isn't it? If you look at this pig skin under a microscope, you can see that it is quite similar to human skin. You can see the traces of pores because the skin has lost its hair, but there is one hair left here. If you pull it out, the hair root is in the dermis, right? As you can see, pigs are mammals just like humans, and their skin color is similar. So, pig skin is often used as a substitute for human skin in experiments. Therefore, today I would like to explain the process of regeneration of wounds on our bodies through an experiment of suturing pig skin. Animal skin has a very diverse range of functions, the most important of which is the protection of internal tissues from external stimuli and pathogens. Therefore, when the skin is wounded, the internal tissues are exposed and the risk of infection arises. When a wound occurs, our body immediately begins to heal itself through cell division. To summarize the wound healing process, first blood coagulates in the wound, blocking the entry of pathogens, and then an inflammatory reaction occurs to remove the pathogens from the wound. Next, cells around the wound divide and cover the wound area, and gradually, over a period of time, the covered cells mature near the original skin, completing the recovery process. In this way, wounds on our bodies heal spontaneously over time. However, if the wound is very large or deep, it may take longer to heal, increasing the risk of infection or scarring. In such cases, the wound is artificially sutured to block infection and accelerate healing. Now, let's look at how to stitch a wound on pig skin. Imagine this is a real wound. We use a curved needle for stitching. First, we insert the needle near one edge of the wound, bring it inside, and then out. We do the same on the opposite side, making sure the stitches are even. Then, we wrap the thread around the needle, and tie it tight to bring the edges of the wound together. We tie a few more knots to make sure it's secure, then cut off the extra thread. We repeat this until the whole wound is stitched. Even though this is one of the simpler ways to stitch, it takes skill to do it right. The edges of the wound shouldn't fold over, and the stitch needs to be tight enough to hold, but not too tight. Some people might avoid getting stitches for serious injuries, but proper stitching can make healing faster and reduce scarring. If you have a deep or large wound, it's best to go to a hospital and get it stitched by a professional. Isn't it fascinating that cells only cover the wound area? This happens because of something called density-dependent growth inhibition. Let me explain. When cells are grown in a lab dish, they keep dividing and multiplying. But once the dish becomes full, the cells slow down and eventually stop dividing. This is how cells naturally regulate their growth based on how crowded they are. Thanks to this amazing ability, only the damaged areas of our skin get repaired. Interesting, isn't it? That wraps up our exploration of pig skin and wound healing. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing to our channel for more insights into the wonders of science. This was Fishy Science, where we uncover the mysteries of the natural world. Thanks for watching.